So Jeff Keighley officially announced this morning that the nominations for this year's Game Awards are going to be happening this upcoming Monday, November 18th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And normally, whenever I do these Game Awards prediction videos, I usually wait until after the nominees are already out. Now, I'm still gonna do that this year. I'm sure we'll do a live stream on Monday and go over what I think is gonna win in every category. But before the nominations come out, I actually wanted to do a prediction video talking about what I think is going to get nominated in some of these categories because I feel pretty confident this year. I played a lot of games this year. I feel like a lot of the games that did very well critically are also games that I aligned with and things that I really enjoyed. And on top of all of that, I feel like this is a much easier year to predict than usual. There are definitely still a couple things that I think could come out of left field, but for the most part, I'm feeling pretty confident about some of these categories. And I also feel very confident in what I think the six games are that are going to get nominated for Game of the Year. So with all that being said, let's sit down and predict what I think is gonna get nominated this upcoming Monday for the Game Awards. And clearly, Obi's excited about it too. And right at the very beginning of this video, I want to stress again that these are not necessarily what I think deserve to get nominated in each of these categories. These are what I think the judges for the Game Awards will nominate for each of these categories. And that is a pretty important distinction because whenever I end up doing a video about my favorite games at the end of this year, a lot of these probably won't end up being on that list. So just keep that in mind as we're going through these. Now we're going to kick things off by talking about the games that I think are going to get nominated for the best action game category. And the reason I'm starting here is because historically the Game Awards have a really weird track record in terms of classifying games as action games or action adventure games. I feel like the five action games this year are all pretty solidly locked for this category, whereas the things that I think are potentially action adventure titles or will be classified as action adventure titles will probably fall into that category as well. But again, historically there have been games that could have been in the RPG category that end up in action adventure. I think a good example for something that might end up in action adventure adventure this year because there's not really a platformer category is Astrobot. I definitely feel like that could end up there even though I wouldn't classify that as an action game. Um, but again, in terms of straight action, just action games, these are what I think the five nominees are going to be. Black Myth Wukong, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Helldivers 2, Stellar Blade, and Warhammer 40k Space Marine. The only one game that I think could potentially swap into that category that I didn't mention is Dragon's Dogma 2, but I actually do think that is going to end up more in the action adventure category than in the action game category. And again, all of these other ones that I mentioned are pretty much no-brainers. Black Myth Wukong was like a huge game at one point during this year. Everybody was playing it. Obviously, Call of Duty is a massive franchise. It also has recency bias. It just came out a little while ago, so I feel like Black Ops 6 is again a no-brainer. Helldivers 2, again, viral moment. Everybody was playing that game. Everybody was talking about it. Warhammer, I actually included on this list because I've seen people who are never usually interested in Warhammer talking about this game, playing through this game, and also saying they really enjoyed it. And then the other very obvious one for this one is Stellar Blade. I think that's become a huge new IP for Sony, and there's no way that game does not get nominated for Best Action Game. Now, the only other thing I will say is I think there is potentially a world in which I could see Elden Ring Shadow of the Air Tree, the DLC for Elden Ring, sliding into the action or action adventure game category. However, historically, Elden Ring has been categorized as an RPG during these shows, and that, I think, is the perfect transition into the five games that I think are going to get nominated for Best RPG this year. Now again, Elden Ring is in a weird situation because sometimes they end up designating these big DLC packs as their own game during the Game Awards, and then sometimes they don't whatsoever. I think if that was the case, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed would have been all over the place the year that that game came out. So again, I think they are going to end up putting Elden Ring in these categories, but I wanted to preface uh, basically explaining what I think is going to get nominated for Best RPG with that little disclaimer before we get into this. So, in alphabetical order, these are the games that I think are going to get nominated for Best RPG this year. Elden Ring, Shadow of the Air Tree, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Metaphor Re Fantasio, and of course, Persona 3 Reload. Now I say of course to Persona 3 Reload, but actually that is one of the other games next to Elden Ring that I kind of have an asterisk next to. I think Infinite Wealth, Rebirth, and Metaphor are all absolutely locks for this category. Like no brainer, absolutely no universe in which those three do not get nominated here. However, I do wonder if Persona 3 
potentially doesn't get in there just because of the fact that it is a remake, right? And there were a lot of good remake RPGs this year. We had Paper Mario earlier this year, The Thousand Year Door. We also just recently got the release of Dragon Quest III HD 2D. That game is phenomenal. I could easily see that sneaking into this category as well. Um, so I kind of put like an asterisk there because I think that could sort of be like a placeholder for a remake title. But I think of those remake titles that I mentioned, the one that is most likely to probably get into this category is Persona 3. The only other one that I think could potentially overtake that is Dragon Quest because of the fact that it's an HD 2D game and we already have Metaphor in there and I don't necessarily know if they're gonna nominate both Metaphor and Persona, even though they both were amazing games and both came out this year, I think Metaphor would be the one that ends up on top. Now in a world in which they don't end up designating Shadow of the Air Tree as its own game in the best RPG category, I could also totally see the new Dragon Age game sneaking in there. I have historically never been a fan of Dragon Age, but I do know those games do pretty well critically and I do think this is the audience of judges that would probably nominate that game to be in the best RPG category. And a lot of people, again, are playing it right now because it recently came out. So again, it's got the recency bias going for it too. But I also want to give a very special shout out to a game that I absolutely loved earlier this year. I did a whole standalone video for this game. I streamed a good portion of this game. I adore it. I don't necessarily think it's going to end up in this category because I feel like they might push it to the strategy game category where I actually think it could end up winning. But that game is Unicorn Overlord. Man, it has been a good year for Atlas. Between Unicorn Overlord and, you know, uh, Metaphor and Persona, they have been knocking it out of the park. And again, I adored Unicorn Overlord, and I do see a world in which that could sneak into the best RPG category. But again, I feel like it's more likely to end up in best strategy game, and I do think it could end up winning there. So next up, we have best family game. I think this is another pretty easy one to read in terms of what I think is going to get nominated. And I can actually tell you right now, not only is this game going to get nominated, this game is going to win in this category. Number one, Astrobot. No doubt about it, Astrobot is taking this category this year. Despite the fact that this is normally historically the Nintendo game category, normally they just throw all the Nintendo games here, even if they don't, aren't necessarily considered family games. Like, obviously Pikmin 4 is fun for everybody. You could play Pikmin 4 with your kids. But realistically, I think Pikmin 4 deserved more to be in like the strategy game category and win best strategy game than it did to win best family game. I'm not really seeing people playing Pikmin 4 with their kids, but I digress. I think the nominations for this one, again, are pretty obvious. The ones that I put down in this category this year are Astrobot, The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, Sonic and Shadow Generations, and Super Mario Party Jamboree. Now, the one that I think might not squeeze in there is Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. Very similar situation to brought, what I brought up with Persona earlier here. I also feel like because that game came out so early, a lot of people might forget about it. I also think a lot of these judges might might not consider that a remake and might just consider that a remaster, so it might not be eligible. If that is the case, then I think Paper Mario might get swapped out with the Princess Peach Showtime game that came out back in like February or March, or in terms of recency bias, they might swap in Mario and Luigi Brothership. However, that game has not been reviewing well and it came out at a weird time because now a lot of the people that are on this judges board are probably playing things like Dragon Quest and Metaphor and Dragon Age and probably are not sitting there playing Mario and Luigi right now in their free time. But actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there is one big game that probably is going to get nominated for Best Family Game. So I'm actually gonna swap out Paper Mario, I can't believe I forgot about this when I was writing down what I thought was gonna get nominated. The new Lego Horizon Adventures game. They love their Horizon games during the Game Awards, and I feel like that game is coming out just in the nick of time to squeeze in for the nominations, and I do feel like they'll probably want to throw that in there as well. So I would say replace Paper Mario in my nominees for this category, and instead put in LEGO Horizon Adventures. Now the next category is going to be a really interesting one for me. This is the best indie game category, and the reason I'm saying it's interesting is not necessarily due to the games that I think are going to get nominated. It's interesting because this might not even be a category at all this year. Some of you might remember during the Game Awards last year, Jeff Keighley and the team that put together the Game Awards got a lot of feedback from people who were upset, who thought that there were certain games that got nominated for Best Indie Game that didn't deserve to be there because they shouldn't be classified as indie games because they had big publishers behind them. So I don't even know if they're going to include this category this year. I think they should, and I think the nominees for this one are pretty clear if they do end up including it. So I'm going to include it in my predictions for what I think is going to get nominated. Okay, so my five predictions for what I think is gonna get nominated for best indie game this year are Animal Well, Bolitro, Thank Goodness You're Here, UFO 50, 
and thousand times resist. Now, some of you might be going, what the heck is thousand times resist? If you have not been listening to video game podcasts and other critics about their favorite games this year, this has been on every single list. They said the narrative is amazing, that it was life-changing that playing through this game. Again, I have not had the chance to play this game this year. I'm only going based on what other people have said, but considering how much I've heard this game brought up on other podcasts that I listen to, it seems like a no-brainer that that game is going to get nominated in this category. Again, Balatro and Animal Well, both obvious locks here. And I also think UFO 50 has slight recency bias, but is also a really good game. So I see that getting in there as well. And also, thank goodness you're here. Critical Darling, lots of people were playing that that don't really play indie games. And so I do think that's going to end up in the best indie game category. Now, the two games that I think could potentially squeeze into this category and get nomination are The Plucky Squire and Another Crab's Treasure. Both of those games had a lot of love at certain points during this year. Plucky Squire initially launched and people were saying they were loving it. And then I saw like a few weeks after they had beaten the game, people saying, you know what, actually it's a little too easy and it wasn't as fun as I thought it was initially. And while I think the art style of that game is really good, I also haven't really had a chance to play that game myself, so I can't say too much. However, I have played Another Crab's Treasure. This is the soul-like crab game that came out earlier this year. I adored that game, but I do think it's actually not going to get a nomination this year, despite how fun it was due to the bugs in the Switch version when that game was first released. And I do think a huge audience for that game was on Switch, and I think a lot of people sort of have those initial bugs and the bad performance of that game on Switch still in their head, so they might not end up nominating the game. But again, the game has been patched since then, and it just really is an excellent title and one of my favorite games this year. So it'll be a bummer if another other crab's treasure doesn't get in there, but I do think it could potentially squeeze in if one of the five that I consider to be the locked nominees for best indie game don't end up making it. Now, next up, we have one of my favorite categories, which is best score slash best music. I adore music in video games. Obviously, I upload music reactions sometimes to my favorite tracks and games, and I do feel like this year we have three very solid locks for this category, with those locks being Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Metaphor Re Fantasio, and of course, Elder ring shadow of the air tree this is a category in which i do think they are going to nominate that game as its own thing i don't think there's really going to be a discussion like it was in some of the other game categories with that being said, I also think Astrobot is going to sneak into this category. It's got lots of little catchy tunes, and it's kind of very different from things that normally get nominated here, so I do think Astrobot's going to get in there. And I also think Stellar Blade is going to get in there. Stellar Blade had a great soundtrack, had some jazzy tunes in there, and I think a lot of people sort of forgot about it over the course of this year, but I think as these judges are nominating Stellar Blade again for Action Game, I do think it's going to, you know set off something in their head where they go, you know what, the music in that game was really good. Now, in terms of potential swaps, I could potentially see Persona 3 Reload getting into this category. I could also totally see a world in which Unicorn Overlord sneaks in here. Unicorn Overlord had some amazing music, but again, it came out really early this year, and I think a lot of other games have more of a recency bias. And the other game I'm thinking of, in terms of recency bias, that just came out and has a great score is Silent Hill 2. And I haven't really brought up Silent Hill 2 much in any of these categories, and so I feel like this is one that it probably could sneak in, but again, I'm not putting it as my lock for what I think is going to get nominated. I'm putting it as a potential swap in this category. And that'll bring us to my predictions for the biggest category of all. The reason you're all probably watching this video, the six games that I think are going to get nominated for game of the year this year. And again, I feel pretty confident about this six and I'll explain why I think it's going to be each of these games and why certain games are going to get snubbed a little bit later because I have a lot of potential swaps. The six games that I think are going to get nominated for Game of the Year this year in alphabetical order are Astrobot, Bellatro, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Air Tree, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Helldivers 2, and Metaphor Re Fantasio. Now, the first thing I want to say about these six is three of these are not like the other. Three of these are absolutely positively, no matter what, going to be nominated for Game of the Year this year. And those three games are Astrobot, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Metaphor Re Fantasio. There is no doubt in my mind all three of those get a Game of the Year nomination. The other three are where things get a little tricky. First off, let's talk about Bellatro. Some of you are like, wait, you're talking about the indie card game? You think that's going to get nominated for Game of the Year? I do. First off, again, so many critics are talking about how much they love this game. And also, not just critics. I've seen a lot of my other friends who play games say and they're absolutely obsessed with Bellatro. And I do feel like they usually end up having at least one indie game 
game represented in the game of the year category. And right now this year, I think it's between two. I think it's between Animal Well and Bellatro. And I also think potentially Thousand Times Resist could get in there. But again, I don't know if that game has enough momentum overall to actually sneak in. I've just seen a lot of specifically critics talking about how much they love that game. Uh, but I do think there is a more general appeal for things like Animal Well or Bellatro. And I do think it's more likely than not that Bellatro would take that indie slot over Animal Well. The other one, of course, that has a huge asterisk in terms of what I predicted to get nominated is, of course, Elden Ring Shadow of the Air Tree. I do think they are going to consider that as its own thing this year, as its own game. There's a whole argument to be made about whether or not that actually deserves to be there, considering this was actually a really stacked year for games. Lots of amazing RPGs, lots of new entries and new franchises, but realistically, that DLC was as long as a main title and was incredibly good, except for that final boss. I feel like that DLC was amazing. And so I do think that is probably going to secure a slot here. And the other big one that I know I have an asterisk over, I could see this going either way, is Helldivers 2. That game had a lot of backlash earlier this year, but they quickly fixed a lot of those issues and I do feel that game has a very strong community and it's kind of the big multiplayer talking point of this year so I think if a big traditionally multiplayer game gets in that's probably going to end up being the game. Now with that being said there are lots of games this year that I think could potentially slide into that Bellatro Elden Ring Helldivers category. One of those games is most definitely Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. I do feel like Echoes of Wisdom is a weird one because a lot of us adored playing that game as it came out. I still feel very strong that I adore that game, but I have seen people saying that they have issues with it now that they've actually beaten it, and so I don't necessarily know if that'll actually end up getting in there, but I do think of any of the potential swaps, that probably is the most likely to take a slot over something like Helldivers, or if Elden Ring is not considered its own game for Game of the Year. Another one that I think could potentially get in there is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. The only thing really working against it, despite the fact that it has lots of critical acclaim and lots of people adored that title, is the fact that it came out so early this year. That game came out in like what January or February and the other game I feel very strongly could end up landing a slot for game of the year again just due to recency bias of the judges would be Dragon Age again I am not a big fan of Dragon Age but that is absolutely a franchise that these critics adore and that the judges adore and I could absolutely see it landing a nomination as well I just don't think it's as much of a lock as the other six that I predicted and I know the big one that's probably standing out to people in terms of a snub for this category is Black Myth Wukong I'm telling you guys that game is probably not going to get nominated for game of the year set your expectations right now it did not review as well as some of these other games and while obviously the players who loved it loved it we are talking about what the critics and what the judges are nominating for game of the year and i do feel like a lot of those critics and judges are not going to vote for black myth wukong even if that game had some really great action and some really cool art direction again i just don't think it's going to end up landing a slot for game of the year this year but let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you think is going to get nominated in each of these categories? Obviously, we're going to find out very soon if I was right or very, very wrong. Of course, this upcoming Monday, I'll be live streaming my reactions to the actual nominations. And probably during that same live stream, I'll probably vote for what I think deserves to win in each of these categories as well. So look forward to that on Monday. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Nakama!